The following video contains full spoilers for how fish is made. I highly recommend playing this free 20 minute game before watching this video. Also, this game footage includes trypophobia inducing imagery and some potentially disturbing subject matter, so please keep that in mind before watching further. If you're all good, enjoy the video. How Fish is Made makes a very interesting case for itself. This little freeware title that appeared on Steam earlier this year is an oddity, a mechanically simple and visually rough experience. Its strange premise of a sardine wandering through a creepy machine is enough to get any Let's Player's attention, as most of you likely already know, and from the eerie lighting and ambient whirring of the machine's components, the developers have every reason to call this a horror game. Even its bizarre musical number featuring a dancing oral parasite and its host can't overshadow the sense of dread that How Fish is Made cultivates. But while it does have creepy atmosphere and some pretty disturbing imagery, especially if you're trypophobic, what really is meant to unsettle the player is the choice you make. Will you go up or down? What lies beyond those choices? What happens after you make your decision? Throughout its brief 20 minute runtime, this is what makes How Fish is Made such a compelling experience. Everything you do circles back to that choice, up or down. As your sardine character flops further and further toward the machine's end, you encounter other characters who offer vague, cryptic insight on what exactly is going on. Some might even call out their own choice, trying to convince the player of which move to make come decision time. But as much as that's teased, how Fish is Made is complacent with leaving the player guessing, a textbook example of questions taking priority over the answers. It's meant to keep you in the dark. Until its end, that is. As the experience concludes, there's the revelation of How Fish is Made's true narrative and thematic essence. Regardless of what choice you make, this game isn't about that choice at all. It's about conviction. It's about staying true to a decision and never straying from that path, even if you haven't a clue of what the result might be. This is a game that, in a very peculiar way, commentates on decision making in its medium, and more specifically, the motives and beliefs that drive us to choose one over the other. It's incredible just how early this examination takes place. After only a handful of flops in the machine, How Fish is Made gives us the choice, up or down, but we're not given much other context about either. But even then, the language of that decision, the words up or down, they have meaning and implications to us outside of the game. These definitions and connotations are already shaping our choice, giving us some kind of perception over what could happen after we've chosen. So whether this was intentional or not, How Fish is Made is already examining the motives behind our decisions and our desire to commit to those motives. Even words have meaning. Conviction is what How Fish is Made wants to examine most of all. Anyone can make a choice, but why exactly do we make that choice? What factors lead us toward one decision or another, and over time, do these factors strengthen or weaken? Humans can be fickle and indecisive beings, easily swayed by things that transcend our control. So it's admirable that this game is so driven to examine these deeper themes. As bizarre as its world is, How Fish is Made is extremely cognitive. It speaks more than many might assume. At least it seems that way. In all honesty, I can't say for certain if the game's question was made to be such an epistemic one if the devs wanted to microscopically examine the true nature of choice in games. But even if this wasn't as serious a goal when designing it, I have to applaud the developers for at least shining a spotlight on it. It's sobering in a way. The gaming community values seeing their choices have meaning and witnessing the results of our own agency. It's empowering, satiating, and gives structure to the player's role. We like making things happen in the games we play. But we can't forget that games are finite creations. As big and seemingly endless as games have become over the years, there are still lines of code. Code that eventually ends. And the humble development of how Fish is made, how it came together solely by some curious game design students in Sweden, it makes the finite nature of games feel all the more looming, all the more real. By isolating the conundrum to its simplest of forms, the limitations of our own agency become all the clearer. Parasitic performance aside, there are no distractions in how Fish is made, so we're given plenty of room to really ponder how powerful we are as players, how under the guise of seemingly infinite directions, our choices matter less than we think. If I had to be harsh, I'd say how Fish is made's decision to speak its motive, even in jest, to be a bit of a missed opportunity. Maybe it's just because I appreciate subtlety in these types of experiences. As an analytical YouTuber, it's admittedly more fun to uncover it yourself. 
in its own tongue-in-cheek way, saying what the game's ultimate thematic goal is does seem a bit less rewarding than finding that out yourself. Having a fish just say, this is a test of conviction, removes a layer of curiosity and mystique to what would otherwise be an incredibly deep rabbit hole to plummet into. At the same time though, with this pessimistic approach to agency, there's something almost therapeutic about the honesty of how fish is made. This desire to be real with us, smacking us in the face with the fact that choice is an illusion in games, is the kind of ultra-grounded perspective that you'd only find in a game like this. While many games in the past have taken player desires down a peg, I can't remember a game ever being this blunt about it. There was a time when explicit choices in games were romanticized and put up on a pedestal, and as they were praised, the veil was draped over our eyes. We fell for it. Many of us still do. But by redirecting the conversation toward conviction, How Fish is Made highlights the why behind the what. The fragile nature of our own motivations, how fickle and easily influenced we can be. These are things that tell us more about ourselves as players than an illusory decision pre-programmed into a computer game. As much as How Fish is Made wants to commentate on games, it commentates on the players just as much. And that's a pretty courageous move, one that I can't help but commend. Is How Fish is Made a mechanically deep game? Not at all, and some might brush it off because of that alone. It's pretty much a one-way hallway, with NPCs peppered around for good measure, but it manages to grow the tendrils of its design by examining choice so attentively. Visual novels and other less mechanically focused games already knew this, and if we're being pedantic, How Fish is Made could probably have passed as a visual novel. The sluggish, flopping, limited interaction with the environment, there's a lot to argue against when it comes to the game's mechanical ambitions, or lack thereof. But as much as we like to say that mechanics are the language of games, I feel like overlooking the design side of the coin can lead to missing out on some really fascinating experiences. How Fish is Made is one of these experiences, so if you're a rebel and deliberately ignored the disclaimer at the start of this video, I recommend giving this game a go. It's overtly strange and a bit gruesome, yeah, but when games are asking these kinds of questions, I think we should at least give them some passing glances. As a 20-minute flopping simulator freeware game, How Fish is Made has a rough exterior, but the flesh beneath the scales has more juice than you might think. And whether you ultimately decide to go up or down, know that every decision has a motive behind it. Choose wisely.